Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Um, in today's video, I'm sharing part two to our backyard makeover. And part one, if you haven't seen it, is where we extended our patio to make it a little larger so that we can have more entertainment space in our backyard. So this part is where we took about five days to build our pergola so that we can have a little more shaded area in our backyard. So I'll be sharing more projects like this um, just to show you what we've been doing around the house. We've been doing projects during this stay at home season, just like I'm sure maybe many of you are as well. And I wanna say hello to my, all of my new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. Um, you guys have been leaving such nice comments and letting me know how much you enjoy the videos. So I really do appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. I'm gonna continue sharing the projects that we're doing around here, as well as how I'm decorating and changing the house during the holidays, and uh, even some cooking videos if you're interested in that. So again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. We began by using cedar boards. We ordered some from Home Depot, but most of them we got from our local lumber yard. Um, we used uh, 12 foot boards, 10 foot boards. We got um, six, uh, six by six posts that are 10 feet tall and 24 feet boards for the long side. So we began the process by staining. These are the six by six um, beams that are going to be uh, the base for the pergola. So here's Clarence, my husband, and he's laying out the boards and we're getting started uh, by staining all of the boards. We purchased a um, staining gun or a staining machine from Home Depot or maybe it was Lowe's but um, yeah and it made it so much easier to get all of the boards stained it was not only easier but it was also faster the last time uh, we built a pergola we built one um, several years ago at one of our homes that we had and um, at the time we didn't have a staining gun so I rolled every one of those beams uh, with just a roller or uh, in some spots used a paintbrush so it was a lot longer process than it was this time so he's uh, getting the board stained and then I'm also going to uh, help out getting the board stained as well and here I am getting started he kind of showed me how to use it um, he used those long strokes and here I am here using the shorter strokes so he had to kind of help me understand how to how to uh, use it properly and to get the best use to get most of the stain without it blowing away. I also was holding it up just a little too high, but it, I got better as I went along. I actually enjoyed doing it once I got the hang of it, so I ended up staining most of the boards while he um, was getting everything laid out and, and ready to get started so we spent the first day pretty much uh, staining and getting everything done and we would uh, use the saw horses to make it easy so once we would stain one side we'd put it over to the other side to uh, start drying and it didn't take too long to dry then we would go and get more boards and bring them out and we would stain those while the other ones were drying and then while I was staining, he would uh, take the ones that were dry back over to the patio and stack them up again. So they would be kind of organized before he started to build. So here we're just kind of clamping these boards together so that I can um, stain them on the sides. So we did the, the top and the bottom and then uh, the sides. And it's always good, well, we find that it's better to uh, get a good stain coat on before you start building. It makes it so much easier to just go back and do some touch-ups. So later in the video, you'll see me where I'm, I'm touching up after we're getting started and getting it built. But it would be a lot harder if you don't stain the boards first. Be 
because you'd really have to reach in between the boards as they're up and they'll be a lot closer so if you get it all done ahead of time all you have to do later are the touch-ups so here's a, a view of what he's doing here he's cutting the edges he used an angle um, he let me kind of decide how I wanted it uh, to be designed and I really just wanted a clean simple look I didn't want fancy edges or anything so I told him to just do just an angle on one end of the board and uh, you'll see it as it's put up but I just wanted to keep it clean and simple so after he um, drew the little um, trace the little design then he went ahead and uh, cut the angles on the boards so these are the ones that have dried and he's cutting several of the board's angles before he uh, puts them up. So here we decided to lay out the boards just to kind of get an idea of spacing and um, how close we wanted them together. So we ran a tape measure across the top and we just were kind of deciding how close we wanted them and how far we wanted them to um, be out over the edge of the patio and it'll create just a little shade border and you'll see that in just a moment we decided to move them closer than um, we originally planned just to make more shade and so here is a look at how it's going to be over the edge just to create a shade border and we use that tape measure to um, do them six inches apart because Texas gets really hot y'all and um, we really needed to have those boards a little bit closer together so we had to go back to Home Depot and buy more boards so that afternoon we went and made a run and got more boards and those are the ones that aren't stained yet. So I'm going to have to go back and stain those, but he went ahead and cut the edges off. So I'll do that tomorrow. It's just a beautiful evening and it had really cooled off, thankfully. He was talking about Marley. He was eating those little bitty pieces of wood. He would, well, not eat them, but chew on them. And so we had to put them in the house. So it's the next day and he's putting up the crossboards. It was really windy that day, but he's getting started with drilling in the bolts. As you can hear, it's pretty noisy. Just leveling it out, making sure everything's good. And he's gonna put the uh, top board in now. You can see the wind blowing. It was such a windy day, but it was hot so it felt better. being up on the ladder it was a little tricky so he's just uh, making sure it's level on the top and measuring for the bolts again where he's gonna add those uh, heavy-duty bolts we decided to use uh, silver um, since the boards are a dark stain and the stain color is uh, black alder by Sherwin Williams. And it's the same stain color that is on our shutters in the front of our house. So we wanted to keep all of that together. 
So when you see our house, our house is um, where you can see the front and the back. So uh, we wanted to keep everything coherent. He decided to put on his earphones because drilling in those uh, bolts was really loud. So he's adding a um, board on either side of the uh, post. So you can see here there's one on each side. So he's going to do that on all four corners there just to make it extra sturdy. So he's setting all of the cross boards first and then he'll be um, ready to start putting in the top boards. So these are all the boards that are going to go on top. He's just making sure they're all there and available. And that little bitty um, uh, board that was on top of the ladder, the one that he's putting up there, that's a spacer. And um, he's just setting the boards up there and spacing across. So he put one on either side so that he didn't have to keep measuring. And uh, he'll just move the spacer over each time and just put a board in there. And he's just measuring uh, how far it goes out just to make sure they're all lined up. Now here are the brackets. I wanted to show you this that's holding the top boards in place. And he used two L brackets and he's just uh, hammering them onto the cross board. And then he'll be able to just set the boards into that bracket. So he put them on uh, either side and then he uh, lifts the boards up onto the top and sets them inside the bracket. And then he'll use screws to screw the brackets to the boards. That just keeps everything really um, secure and safe. So here he is fitting them inside the brackets. And he'll do that all the way across. And there's several ways you can do it. That's just the way he decided to do it. Because we didn't want to use the black uh, brackets that uh, people normally use because the boards themselves were black. We wanted to use something that would kind of offset and we chose the silver. So this is what it looks like after he got them all set across. It looks so good. And we were so excited to get this much of it done. So the only thing left for the next day is going to be just the little short side here. So before we go in for the evening, he's just uh, going to screw in some of the, the boards, just adding the screws just to secure them on the top. It's the next morning and I am just uh, sweeping off some of the sawdust and uh, anything that had gotten onto the, the beams. I'm going to be um, staining and touching up any of the places on the boards that got kind of scuffed up during the process of the build. And then he, on this side, is putting in the beams on the short side and getting that part covered. And it was a hot, hot day. This was the hottest day that we had while we were building. <laughs> so I even went in the house and put a hat on just to keep that sun off of me. But yeah, so I'll show you here where I'm just going around on all of the beams and just adding another coat of the stain just to make sure everything is covered and just uh, really nice there's always going to be places that you miss so I wanted to go back and just um, 
go over everything and just do a touch up. And here I am on this side just um, doing the edges that were uh, where he cut that they still had to be stained. And even though it looks like it went pretty fast, I actually spent the whole day just doing the touch-ups. So I sped it up a little bit for you guys' sake so the video wouldn't be too long, but it actually did take all day to go through all of the boards. And of course I took a few breaks because it was really, really hot that day. It was the hottest day um, that we had while we were building. But I was determined to get it done all in one day, so I really went through and just um, did the best I could to get all of the, the spots. And all of the edges had to be done where he had cut, um, so I went through and just did that. But we were really happy with the way it turned out. And um, yeah, even though we were uh, getting it done and working hard in the, in the hot breeze or the hot air, the hot weather, we were enjoying ourselves. And here he's just uh, using and uh, cutting the base boards that are gonna go around the base of the um, poles. So here he's chiseling out a space that's gonna fit over the brackets. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So he had to uh, chisel it out and he had to have two for each beam, but four beams total at the bottom. I mean, four boards total at the bottom. So he had to chisel the, that space out so it would fit over the brackets of the beam. And here he is uh, showing you how it fit on there. See those brackets that connected it to the concrete? So he's uh, he wanted it to fit snug so the short beams where the uh, bracket was, he went ahead and chiseled that out on the short, short boards, I'm sorry. And here's a look of the finished product for the pergola. We just finished it today. My husband finished putting up all the boards, connecting everything, and I did all the touch-ups on the stain. And it looks really good. I think everything turned out great. So this is the long side and we'll put the dining room table right here. And then if we go around. This is the other side. And we're gonna put our chairs in this area here. So there's a short side and a full longer side. This is what it looks like underneath. And so we're getting ready to power wash because all of the chalk lines are still there that we had to draw to get everything straight and map out where we were going to put everything. So yeah, we're gonna get it cleaned up. There's the other chalk line. Get everything cleaned up and we'll be putting in the patio furniture. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you really enjoyed this. We wanted to show you the process and thank you for subscribing. Be sure to like, share, and comment. Marley and I thank you for watching. Look forward to part three where I show you how I decorate the pergola.